four and the last part of series of flip throughs of folders in my art practice this is my last folder and I love can we just appreciate how cool this folder is it's just perfect for artists and colorists and I think we all should have one I will leave a link down below for this folder and for this I wanted something very special to go in there which are palettes and other artists palettes ideas so we have this and this is both a chronological record of palettes I have had in the past and also palettes that other artists have and I get really interested in what colors they use for what purposes and things so we start off with this this is a chart from the very first palette that I personally put together myself not you know not following somebody else's instructions and what I basically did was I went to the art store and picked tubes that looked nice I kind of recommend that as a first way of putting together your own palette because when you're first starting I think it's very important to just play with colors that you like so that you get used to the material of the watercolor medium and get to play with colors and just experience the joy of playing with the colors you like the only rules I did follow was to make sure I had uh, cool and warm yellows cool and warm reds and cool and warm blues everything else was just like yeah just like throw it on so that was my first one that I put together then we have a color chart of the palette I first put together like to follow a course which was Yao Chang's courses on creative bug now she does beautiful modern watercolor floral stuff not really my style but it was a great experience to learn about brushwork and things and I will leave a link to that course down below and she uses Windsor and Newton colors because she does a lot of floral and, and plant work you get a lot of yellows and reds and pinks next up is the Stephen Quiller's expanded palette that that I used for his color theory course this is the layout he has for his custom designed palette now I couldn't get hold of one cheaply over here in the UK so I put together my own one also using my own paints that I had because as I said before the best value and the cheapest paints you can get is the ones you already have this is how I arranged it in just one of these palettes because I couldn't find a, a round one here in the UK so this palette was mostly Holbein then added Daniel Smith and Schmincke's where I needed now moving on this isn't technical palette but it was so beautiful I just had to have it in here this is a copy of Nita Leland's pigment temperature wheel and I have no reason to have this in here it's just beautiful and who doesn't like a nice rainbow color in circles next up is Nita Leland's working palette and she also does a very good color theory course that I mentioned before and she has them arranged in chromatic order I haven't filled some of these yet but she goes from blues to greens to yellows to reds to the earthy colors over here i learned about split complementary palettes from nita leland and this is her split complementary palette where you have six colors from two from each primary cool and warm and to get the best mix of clear bright colors then we have the Carling Holman palette which I've made a video of before and as you can see it was a scrap piece of paper <laughs> that I used um, then I have the transparent palette the first time around this is the version that you saw in the video later on you will see uh, the updated version of how it is now and these were all transparent paints at the time 
Then we have Eve Bolt's Fall palette, which I just fell in love with. It was beautiful range of colors. And normally with palette charts, I try to fill them in as much as I can. If I don't have the right brand, I kind of just fill it in with another brand. But because this was a Daniel Smith palette and because they're so beautiful colors, I kind of wanted to keep them all with uh, Daniel Smith colors. So I have left these gaps for now and hopefully I get to fill them in soon. From her palette, I picked out, I already had the Queen Rose and then I ordered these five new colors, the Aussie Red Gold, Deep Sap Green, Ultramarine Turquoise in Danthrone Blue and Rose of Ultramarine. And I, I'm really glad I did because they're all very beautiful colors. Next up, we have my current version of the transparent palette, which is looking like this at the moment. And basically the difference is that I moved the quinacridone, burnt orange and the golds up here, uh, swapped out a couple of the reds, added some of the colors I bought after I saw Eve's video, like the Rose of Ultramarine and then Down Throne Blue and and just moved things around a bit to make sense like moving that blue in with the other blues i'm still not quite happy with it there are a couple of colors that i'm noticing that i'm not using at all so i can probably remove but i just have to stop fiddling with it at some point because it's never gonna <laughs> it's a never ending task then we have jean's haynes palette which just came from a dot card that came with the Daniel Smith dot cards that I bought so I thought it was fun to just make a chart with it really interesting colors colors I, I wouldn't particularly choose myself but very interesting nevertheless then we have paint with David uh, who, who is a YouTube channel and does beautiful watercolor tutorials and he has quite limited palette. Next up, we have Frank Clark. You can find his painting tutorials on YouTube also, and I'll leave a link down below for that too. His teaching philosophy is that watercolor doesn't have to be complicated. You can simplify it and make it really easy for yourself. And you can tell that from his limited palette. His palette is very limited. It's essentially, minus the white gouache, it's an eight color palette and it's very interesting to see that he can create so much mood from so few colors. Next up we have David Bellany and he is a landscape painter. He uses mostly Winsor Newton and as much as I badmouth Winsor Newton, it's a very good brand for painting landscapes. And I can't really make heads or tails on his selection, but that's because I am not a natural landscape painter. Next up, we have Billy Shoals palette, and she is a botanical painter. And so naturally she has many, many purples and pinks and oranges and yellows. And she uses Sennelier because it layers very beautifully and she uses a lot of layers in her work. And then we have Quentin Blake's palette. He is a children's book illustrator and he, as you can see, he has many colors. And I can understand because in illustrating children's books, I guess you have to be ready to paint any kind of scene. What's really interesting about his palette, if you ever see his documentary, is he has this board with like a full pan just stuck on with the names written in between and he just has that above where he works and just paints from that so it's, it's so it's not like a traditional palette palette it's not like this or in a metal pan but i think it's really awesome that he figured out a way that works for him so that is it for my palette folder I hope it was interesting for you. I love seeing people's palettes and especially like what color section they have for what purposes and how they lay out on their palettes. So if you know of any other watercolor artists' palettes that I might be interested in, please let me know in the comments down below. 
If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this folder, please also ask away in the comments down below. This is the final episode of what turned out to be a series of playthrough. I hope you enjoyed all four episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.